Well, there can be few people within this industry to have had a career as illustrious as the man sitting to my, my left here. Keith Kent, you've been the head man at uh, Old Trafford, you've been the head man at Twickenham, and now you're doing an awful lot of work on uh, a rugby, uh, rug improving rugby pitches up and down the country. But here we are, we're at the uh, Dennis Sizes seminar in Durham, and it's uh, fundamentally cricket. What, what can you... Let, what, what synergies are there between the career you've had and uh, the career of a cricket groundsman? Whilst I was at Twickenham for the 16 and a half years that I was there, the second best part of my job was going out into the community and visiting all the local community clubs. And very often they have a pitch on a cricket outfield and they sort of, the two codes interlock. And I was almost a uh, the interface between the two clubs and I offered advice of how best to prepare the, the pitch at the end of the rugby season going into a cricket season because heaven forbid a ball going flying across an outfield rearing up and hitting somebody in the face as they go down to pick the ball up and vice versa if the cricket outfields rolled every week and it's as hard as iron when we start playing rugby again in September October we need to relieve that compaction for them to play rugby on it. So it, it's a balancing act between the two. And I've devised ways with sanding, mainly aeration, a bit of seed, some fertilizer, just to marry the two sports together. And very often the, the clubs are at one another's throat, so to speak, yeah. because we want to play next week and you want to play a friendly next week and vice versa. Good old grand, groundsman stuck in the middle. And the groundsman stuck in the middle. So. I, I've tried to liaise between the two and that is my involvement and I, and I quite enjoy it because very often you take the sting out of it and they become the best of mates and they, and they work with one another because sometimes very often the juniors who are playing rugby on a Sunday morning come the summer I've got nothing to do all of a sudden want to play cricket because they're interested in it, yeah. so it's a, a it's a win-win situation. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned earlier your, your your groundsmanship career started with Leicester City, way back was it in the? Was, yeah. did, I, did I hear it was 1970? 1970. 19, yeah. You don't look old enough if I may oh, say so. Thank you. But uh, you must have seen some incredible changes, improvements, hopefully within groundsmanship over that period of time that uh, you've spanned. Yes, very much so, very much so. We we, we have a vast knowledge. And, and we're pushing the boundaries even further and further. The grass seeds that we have from my days, when I was, at, when I was in 1970, the, the grass was as thick as my finger. Yeah. Now, now we've fine, got the fine-leafed fine yeah. ryegrasses. Yeah. Sand, we knew that sand did something, but we didn't know in what order to put the sand and we didn't know which sand to use. We've now got that off to a fine art. Yeah. So much so that we had to reinforce it. We were draining it too fast, yeah, yeah. so we reinforced it with first the fibre sand pitch and then the advent of the Desso Grassmaster and the Cis Grass and now the pitches are absolutely fantastic. But for all that, the groundsmanship has improved so much. We don't just cut the grass and mark fantastic white lines, we have a science behind us and the science behind us include, include... No more is it muck and mystery? No, no. Things that have changed my life and every groundsman's life are the Coro Field Top Maker, the Verti Drain, because aeration is so important, and the electric lighting rigs. Oh, we can play football in the dark now. <laughs> It's been incredible. I can hear in the background that they're going to start the second half of the seminar. I don't want to hold you away from learning more because we're never too young to learn no, or too old no, to learn. Right. And, uh, but thank you very much, Keith, thank for you, a little Scott. bit of your time. I much appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you.